Hi everybody, welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're gonna to be talking to some of the subscribers again. We've got a comment from a guy by the name of TS, and uh, I decided to do a video on this. It'll be easier to explain as opposed to writing a three-page essay in the comment section below. Here is the question. Hi Chris, I'm running a BMW N54, that's the 3 liter N, uh, M335 engine. Uh, and I'm looking at these two turbos. I want to be able to, I want to be capable of making 750 wheel at 7,000 RPM red line on around 28 to 32 pounds of boost. That's two bar boost gauge pressure. E40 fuel, my question is, will the G3900 be able to make this power goal without falling off at the high RPM? Or should I go with the G35? It's going to be mostly a street car and some half mile roll racing. So. First off, guys, let's understand what the application is. These, both these turbochargers on paper, according to the Garrett catalog, are capable of flowing 90 pounds of air. Uh, if you follow the compressor map, it's actually closer to about 750, 780 pounds of air. Um, but which one of these is the right choice for this specific car and this specific application? So, first off, TS has mentioned that this is going to be mostly a street car. So, we need response. Second of all, he's doing high RPM racing. It's half mile roll racing. So he's going to get up to speed first, second, maybe into third gear, depending on what uh, RPM or what speed he's going to be crossing the start line at, because it's roll racing. And he's going to be spending his time in the high engine RPM band to be able to obviously make, uh, achieve a good speed across the half mile. So he needs horsepower, but he needs horsepower in the high RPM range. of the engine. So I'm going to draw two graphs for you and I'm going to go into a little bit of an explanation. The red obviously is the G3900 AR61, the black is the G35900, same AR61 turbine housing. So the first question you're going to ask is, are these two AR61 turbine housings the same? And the answer is yes, they are 100% identical, the only difference is that the G35 has been machined for a larger turbine, otherwise the actual casting, the volute dimensions, the volume inside the housings are exactly the same. They're from the same T3 family, um, both AR61 and they both have V-band 76mm inlet and V-band 90mm outlet. The only difference is the engineering, the machining inside of the turbine housing that's different to suit the G35 as opposed to the G30 turbine wheel which are smaller diameters, smaller and larger diameters from the G30 to the 35. So here's a graph that you can expect to see. Uh, you'll notice there's no numbers here in terms of horsepower, torque and obviously RPM. This is just to illustrate, just for illustrative purposes to show you which turbocharger will operate and respond and perform against the other one or in comparison to the other one. So the red cokey or the red pen is your G3900 with a 61 turbine housing which your power will probably start to look like that. That's your power curve. The G35-900, which is in black, will look a little bit different, which will look like that. So what you need to understand here is that, let me just draw a border up here so that we can get some idea of where this actually ends. Oops, get that across here like that and your red, your 30, will start to drop. It might not drop as sharp as that, or it might actually drop as sharp as that, depending on your scale, but you will be able to see there will be a big difference. I must actually just change this a little bit, because it will be a little bit more responsive than this in the uh, low end, low to medium end range. So on the G30, you're going to find that the low end response, linear response, is going to be that much better than the G35. And the reason is the turbine is obviously heavier, the turbine is a lot uh, slower in responding, the back pressure in the turbine housing with the G35 is a lot less, but it takes a lot more uh, um, to get the actual ro uh, turbine rotating and up to speed. Now, I've used this analogy before, this comparison before, if you blow through a straw and you blow through a hose pipe, you're going to get 
the idea of what I'm talking about. When you start blowing through a straw, it is very similar. I'm talking about the pressure inside, the kinetic energy inside, the, spe the speed, the, the air speed of the actual uh, uh, energy flowing through the turbine is going to be a lot higher in the 30 uh, to, in, in the example of the G3900 as opposed to the G35. But once you start getting the 35 up to speed, it'll obviously have less back pressure, less bottleneck, less resistance to get that energy out of the engine, through the turbine and out of the exhaust. So you'll make more power with a 35, which is going to be beneficial for your high RPM range, obviously better for your, uh, uh, um, your rolling mile or rolling half mile racing. But the 30, is going to be better low down for your street driving. Now, it's a good question, but the answer doesn't lie in your question. The answer is quite simply a simple one, and it's a little bit of an ingenious one. Use the G3900 so that you can get the benefit of a linear low down response, but at the same time, run a slightly larger AR turbine housing to alleviate some of that back pressure. That's option one. I don't believe that running an 83 turbine housing, AR83 turbine housing with a G3900 will be as laggy as a G35 with a 61 turbine housing. However, it might meet you in the middle. So the graph that you might land up having, might, I'm gonna use the black pen for this, might look something similar to that. So it might meet you in the middle of these two graphs. If that's good enough for you, job done. If it's not good enough for you, my next suggestion would be as follows. You've got a little bit of boost, that, uh, boost variance that you've mentioned, 28 to 32 pounds of boost. What I would do is I would run, and I'm gonna delete or rub this out, I'm gonna kill these lines for a second. What I would do is I would actually go and run the G30. If it was my car, this is what I would do. I would run the 61 turbine housing because I like a punchy car. I like something that's gonna be, re be responsive. I like a car when I'm at 120 kilometers on an hour on the road, which is our high speed, or should I say highway speed limit, in top gear, and I put my foot down, I don't want to have to, if it's a manual, start getting Arnold Schwarzenegger's left arm because I have to change gears so many times. I want some form of response. I want to be able to put my foot down, and the turbo should start to wake up already. So for that kind of requirement, I would actually run the turbocharger up to a point where it starts to fall away. At that point, Let's say we are running at 20, 28 pounds of boost. At that specific point, let's say it starts to fall off and that's at, let's say, 5,800 RPM, I would go back to approximately 5,500 and I would increase the boost pressure to 32 pounds at that point just to lift that curve up, just to try and bridge the gap between where it starts to fall and just to hold it, just to lift that power and the torque curve up slightly and carry it in later into the RPM range. So boost control tuning would actually help you keep this turbo on song. Now, if your engine is already built for two bar boost with this specific turbo, you're more than likely looking at approximately 600 horsepower, 700 horsepower. Um, as you've mentioned, you're trying to make 750 wheel. You're pushing the turbocharger quite close to its limits. You'll be able to make that but you're gonna to need to run a little bit more than 28 to 30, 32 pounds of boost, which is the next point I wanna bring up. If you're gonna be running that kind of horsepower, I would actually suggest running a G35 1050 and, uh, or GTX 35 82 Gen 2, uh, which is capable of 900 or 950 horsepower as opposed to your G35 1050. Now, this is the reason I say that. When you look at the Garrett compressor maps, if they give you a rating of 900 horsepower, it's 900 crank horsepower, not 900 horsepower at the wheels. So you will absolutely have to max out a G30 or a G35 900 to be able to make 750 wheel horsepower, which is one of your requirements at 7,000 RPM. Your power, max power, will be made earlier than 7,000, probably at about 6466, regardless of which turbo you're going to be using. But with clever boost control, you'll be able to make that horsepower uh, uh, peak move around in the higher RPM range, depending on how you actually structure the boost. I hope that shed some light on the subject for you. I hope that's been informative. And uh, I hope you can make a decisive or a, a concise decision about which turbo you want. Furthermore, guys, comments, 
down in the, in the, in the, in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, let's uh, interact. If you have any other questions, give us a shout. See you next time.